Today's video is all about the brake pads. If your car is squeaking, grinding, or whining when you hit the brakes, we're going to fix that. Today I'm going to change the front disc pads on my 2005 Cadillac STS, the V8 model. Let's get started. Here are the tools that you're going to need to complete this job. A breaker bar, a flathead screwdriver, a ratchet, I'm using a half inch ratchet, two sockets, one is a 13 millimeter, that's for the caliper bolts, the other is a 19 millimeter, that's for the lug nuts, a crescent wrench, a C clamp to depress the caliper pin, and an impact driver just to make things a little easier. Okay, the first thing you want to do is park on a level surface block the tires, put your emergency brake on. Grab your flathead screwdriver and take your center cap off. Have my 19 millimeter with my breaker bar. Time to break the tightness of the bolts. The next step is to jack up the car. I'm using my three ton floor jack and I have it positioned under the car on the frame. Make sure you have your jack touching the frame and nothing else. This is where it's handy to have an impact driver. It makes this process a little easier. After you jack the car up, I forgot to mention this, you support the car with stands and then I also like to slide the tire under just in case. It never hurts to be extra safe. I like to uh, release a little bit of the pressure from the brake fluid. I just take the cap off, I release the cap, put it back on, and I just sit it there so when I'm pushing back the caliper, none of the fluid comes out, but by taking the cap off, it does make it a little easier to push it back. This is what we're looking at here. Here's the rotor, here's your brake caliper, here's your brake caliper housing, here's your brake line, here's your strut. Right here on the top, you have one 13 millimeter bolt right here that holds the caliper to the caliper housing. Then right underneath that, here's your brake line. Right underneath that, you have another 13 millimeter bolt right here, which holds the caliper to the caliper housing. Uh, you simply put your ratchet and socket on and break the initial seal. and then you can just twist the top on and off and then you do the same thing to the bottom. And then just twist it off by hand. When I just took the caliper bolts out, they came out very easy. Sometimes this part right here where the caliper bolt screws into, sometimes it moves and that's why I had the crescent wrench but on this particular one, it wasn't needed. Now, as you see, your caliper just comes right on off. Right here are the brakes that I'm using. Duralast Gold C-Max. These are ceramic pads and they come with the shimmy. Very quality, very high quality pads. I've been using these for over 10 years. I've had zero complaints. Got them from AutoZone and they were $60 and they come with a lifetime warranty. So anytime your pads go bad, you just take them in and you get a new pair. It's not bad for 60 bucks. I simply have the caliper sitting on top of the steering knuckle. I grab the brake pads and they just pull right on out. One in the front, one in the back. Here's the old pads. Here's my old pads. Uh, they were actually pretty thin. Take a look at that. And then I'll compare them to the new pad. You can see the difference in the thickness. It was time for me to change. You wanna make sure that your new pads look exactly like your old pads, which these do. And then what you wanna do is this hardware right here you get your flathead screwdriver and you never touch 
your rotor with anything sharp. So you get your flathead screwdriver and you simply wiggle this off until it comes right on out. And what I like to do, I like to have a little mental note of how it came off. So I sit it just like that and then I put the new one on. Just like the brake pad, you want to make sure that your hardware is identical, which this is. So I'll go ahead and just simply slide this back up into place for the top and then take the bottom out. The bottom, the bottom came out just like that with these big pins pointing down. Make sure the new one goes on just like that. It's just that simple putting your hardware on. Okay, now what we're gonna do, if you see the piston right here, these pistons are pushed out pretty far. So what I do, I get my old pad, I position my old pad right here, and then I get the C-clamp, and I am put the C-clamp on the back of the caliper, put the C-clamp on the brake. As I tighten the C-clamp, it will pull this piston in, and then it will give me room to clear the new brake pads. This is where you see the C-clamp bringing the piston in. Okay, as you see, I've depressed the piston all the way back. I'll go ahead and take the C-clamp off. And then I'm ready for the next step. You can see it's pretty flush. This next step is optional, but for me it's pretty important. I have my air compressor hooked up and I'm going to blow out all the dust and dirt from the caliper and on the uh, rotor. Just to let you know, I was wearing eye protection and a respirator. In case you don't have an air compressor, you can use a brake cleaner or you can also use brake cleaner as well. You don't want to spray too much. A lot, a little goes a long way. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Now, let's put the brakes on. In order to put your brakes on, it doesn't matter if you go in the front or back or the top or bottom, but you simply just line them up and push them in. Make sure it's nice and snug. Do the same with the back. When you put these on for the first time, it might be a little tight. So if you got to do a little wiggling to get the pad into the new hardware, that's common. As you see, the brake pads are flush against the rotor. Nice and flush against the rotor, the front and the back. So it's time to put the caliper on. Since you depress the caliper pin all the way back, the caliper slides on very easy. And then you get your bolts. Go from the top. Hand tighten them, hand tighten the top, hand tighten the bottom. Okay, then tighten the bolts to specs. Now you're almost done. As you can see, a lot of movement, but that's okay because you're about to bleed the brakes and then they'll go ahead and tighten up. Here's the last step. Right here is your bleeder valve cap. Uh, this is the only time you're going to need an assistant. You want to take your cap off. Uh, it's typically a 10 millimeter. So you release the tension on the bleeder valve. You have your assistant pump the brakes two or three or four times. On the last pump, they hold down as far and as hard as they can while you tighten. Essentially what you're doing is you're pushing fluid out, making sure you're getting all of the air bubbles out. I would show it, but currently I don't have anyone to help me right now, so I have to wait until my wife and kids get home. But that's all you would do. Okay, now it's time to put the tire back on. What I do is hand tighten all five lug nuts, then I get my impact wrench, then I snug the lug nuts up, lower the car, I grab my torque wrench, torque the lug nuts to specs, which is typically 100 foot pounds. Make sure you use the appropriate brake fluid for your car. You want to make sure that it is topped off. 
and then you're good to go. As you see, that's just how easy it is to change your front disc brakes. Uh, this side, the driver's side, it took roughly 20 minutes. So both sides is gonna take under an hour. Uh, if you are feeling a little confident, give it a shot. If not, you can go to a dealership. Uh, for my car, 2005 Cadillac STS, they were gonna charge $360. Not saying that it's not worth it. I'm just saying that's what they're going to charge. Uh, I bought these brake pads for $60, $60 and took me less than an hour. Okay, uh, as usual, I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Be sure to answer. You guys have a good one.